what are your daily healthy habits around money and business that no matter what is going on in the economy, it doesn't matter because you are still slaying it. Hello, hustlers, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business owners, everybody out there trying to turn an idea into income. I want to welcome you to Serious Business because it's serious, but it's not all that serious. Welcome to your weekly spot to get everything you need to know about making your business more profitable, but also having a lot more fun while doing it, because if this ain't fun, you shouldn't be doing it. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Serious Business. And I am here with the perfect person for this week's podcast topic. I'm here with Melanie Orr. Hey. Here's the reason she's the perfect person. Yeah, tell me. She is obsessed with worrying about money. So we're oh. going to talk about recession proofing your business on this week's podcast. And as you know, there's been a lot of buzz around recession talk the last few months. Yeah. And Melanie is a hell no to my hell yeah. It's true. It's I would true. spend it all. It's true. You would put it all in a bucket under your bed. It's true. We shouldn't say that. People are going to try to find our house now and think you have a bucket under your mm, bed. Yeah, but no, I feel like somehow I was a depression baby. I just want to stuff it all under the mattress and you keep know, it. You my, know, my grandmother put money in tinfoil. She, she would did. wrap it in tinfoil and sit it in the window ledge. Why the window? It was like a back window that no one could see, and it was just... It was oh, wrapped. I thought you meant like just all the window ledges in the house. No, was just like this. one particular window ledge. Uh, you, you want to talk about what your mom did with money? She, yeah. Yeah, when my mom passed away, we found money stuffed in various purses in her closet. And it wasn't like, you know, change that you've left behind in your purse that you just didn't clean out. Well, it was like specifically and strategically put in envelopes with the amount of money in it and left in various purses. I mean, no thief would have wanted any of her bags from 1984, these handbags. But I, I'm convinced you sold that house and there was like $100,000 in the walls. I truly believe, I truly believe that there's probably money in the attic or something. I, I really do believe that there's just money in the house that I never found. I do. <laughs> so if you're stuffing money in purses in your uh, closet or if you are wrapping it in tinfoil, may not be a bad thing right now, to be honest. Yeah. Um, no, we're going to talk about recession proofing your business. And the first thing I want to share is, guys, don't be a personal development fluffy fluff. And not follow the economy, not follow news, not follow what's going on. You cannot be in business. You cannot do business and not track business. You are choosing to be in a business. It doesn't matter what industry. It doesn't matter what topic. It doesn't matter what the skill set is. So first thing is, there's a lot going on in the economy right now. There's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of movement and some non-movement. Follow it so you know what's going on. You want to be educated around money. You want to be edura educated, edurated. That was good. Edurated, edurated around economics and what's going on. So here's the good news. Here's the really good news. So in 2000, what are we in now? 2019. 19. So in 2007, I started my business, you did. give or take, right? Oof. In 2000, uh, I'm old. Yeah. Um, in 2007, I started my business and it was in the, I mean, I said, oh, there's a major recession. Yay, yeah, I'm going to start a business. It was like right before the bubble burst and the real estate yeah. market and all that hit stuff went yeah, haywire. Like just a few months, actually. A few months, yeah. So I started my business in a recession. I grew my business really well during the recession. And so there's a few things to know about that. First of all, I believe we create our own economy. That doesn't mean we're ignorant about the economy going on around us, but I truly believe we create our own economy. And, and how do you do that? Because well, I have some ideas about okay, how you did I'm it. I'm going to say it in this okay, podcast. Okay, I right. mean, we're three minutes, 51 seconds in. Can you give a girl a chance? No, go, go okay. for it. So first of all, I believe we create our own economy and I'm going to tell you how okay. with Miss Bossy right. Bridges yeah. over here will let me. Give it to me. And that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that I knew it was happening and I knew it had taken me months, if not even a year to make a decision to start a business. And I just kept telling myself, 
you have nothing to lose because I really didn't. I mean, yeah. I could have lost some startup money, although I didn't have that much startup. Would you just say the house? <laughs> you could have lost a house. No, I stayed in my job. So I could have lost my job, yeah. I guess, during that time, but I stayed in a day job. I'm a big believer in guys, side hustle, side hustle, side hustle, stay in a job and then build your business. You'll build it faster. You'll build it easier. Anyway, so I also said I have nothing to lose. And so I went ahead with it anyway. And then the third thing is, is I was really strategic in credit, in how I spent money, in the investments I made into the business, in the projections I created for myself of how much I was going to make in the business. And you know this, Melanie, and how much time I put in to make it happen. 90 hours a week. Really? You think that much? How much, how much would you have to work if it was 90 hours a week? There's, well, you had many? your day job. Okay, so if you're including the day, oh yeah, if you're including the day uh, yeah. job, over ninety hours yeah. a week for sure, for I sure. And it wasn't like you could quit your day job and then this miraculously yeah. paid for everything. So exactly. If- so let's talk about where you are right now. If you're thinking about starting your business or you are already in business, let's talk about how to, you know, I, that terminology is kind of a cheesy marketing terminology, recession proof your business. But let's talk about how you forge through a recession. I think one's coming. I think it's happening. I think it's on the way. I hope it's on the way because I, not, not that I want a recession and I want that. She just made an ugly face at me. I it think did. that things, things take equalizing. There, there is a tide is well, a natural there happening. Seasons and there's in life and there's always, we go through no, some No cycle. baby is born without a contraction and then an expansion and right. a contraction and an expansion. So I think that it. And it, businesses, whether it's a, whether it's, you know, a recession or not, we all go through contractions and expansions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So to share some ideas of, the, of how you, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to give some uh, thoughts here and tell you two or three things that I would absolutely do without question. Um, but tell me what your thoughts are. Because well, hers will be scarier and more horrifying uh, for sure. <laughs> no, about ways to recession proof your business. I, yeah. One of the things that I think when I look back at your business and the way that you grew it in a time when most businesses were closing doors and freaking out and not growing is you were out there speaking. You left the house. You did not sit behind a desk and assume you didn't know how to get leads. So the one thing that you forced yourself to do was to go out in the community and you used to do this thing where you called it your 10 mile something, 10 mile radius thing where you basically get in your car, drive in a 10 mile radius and write down every possible place and connection you could go to speak. And you spoke to middle school girls. You kind of did things that didn't necessarily. I forgot about that. Yeah. They're not necessarily what you're doing today, but you didn't say no to any opportunity. You were not signing up for opportunities to talk about nuclear physics, but. Are you insinuating I couldn't speak on that? Potentially. I am three episodes (laughs) into. Chernobyl. Chernobyl. So I could probably <laughs> speak on this topic now. Yeah. Thank you very much. For those of Guys, you who've Showtime, watched Chernobyl, Chernobyl, we're just catching up to it and it's really upsetting and well, and it's, fascinating. It's real. So, but you, any opportunity that you were like, you know what? I can do this. I could talk about it. It may not be what I want to spend the rest of my life talking about. And I think what I see happen with business owners who get stuck is number one, they're sitting behind a computer. They think they can shoot an email out or they can record a podcast and they're going to get a million leads and make a million dollars. And I think they also the miracle is not coming. Just so you know, the miracle is you're not going viral. Uh -uh. You're not getting downloaded a million times. No one is going to find you. You know, I worked in the Broadway theater industry for 10 years and everybody wanted to get discovered. No one gets discovered. No. Discovery comes from working Working. your ass ass off. off. And so some people, we're fat and lazy right now. I think, I think we are, people are lazy. Leads are coming in. Money's coming in. They're not working too hard to have to make it happen. I do not feel lazy right now. No, but (laughs) you know what I mean? And yeah, but we are, we get, we get lazy in some ways because the things are just easier. I really think it's about getting out there, shaking hands, because I think if the economy is slowing down, the more face-to-face connections you make, the more people you talk to, and the less lazy you are, and the more you say yes to opportunities, the more opportunities you'll have. Yeah, so I think her point is what's really key and what you really want to make sure you're doing is not being complacent and not... 
waiting for the perfect opportunity to come up, but instead you're making sure that you are utilizing every opportunity, every resource you have, everything that it is that you want to do. And, and that's exactly what you want to make sure you're paying attention to is what's in front of you and saying yes to everything you can. Now let's get kind of specific into a few things that I think are really key and that you could think about doing to make sure. And listen, I'm saying this is, you know, when possibly facing a recession in business, but this is just good stuff to do regardless. The first thing is get your credit in order. Credit is quite often cut off during a recession. So if right now you are dependent on uh, some credit cards and things like that to run your monthlies and to pay bills, makes total sense. But you want to make sure that you're paying off everything you can in preparation for that. And in preparation for that, you want to have a great relationship with a local small bank. Think a credit union think a regional or small local bank that you can actually pick up the phone and speak to somebody there. And you want to go to them and you want to say, you know, in the next year or so, I may have some improvements that I'm wanting to make. I may have some changes that I'm wanting to make. And I would love to talk with you about a line of credit and getting a line of credit with you. And those lines of credit tend to be easier to manage than a huge national or international credit card company. And so during crunch times of credit, credit, lines of credits through small banks can tend to be easier. So pay off all the debt that you have. And while money is good and you are flush, do that. So you really prepare yourself when you actually do need credit, it's available to you. And the next thing you want to do is you want to, you want to think about your slush fund, right? So, you, you know, some of this is semantics. So there's, there's some different terminology, but in your personal life, they call it your emergency fund. And good rule of thumb is about eight months of living expenses in your emergency fund in life. In business, I say, listen, get whatever you can together for emergency fund. I would say three months minimum, uh, six to 10 months would be ideal. And that is your running costs, hard cost of your business that if something happened, you know, you can run for X amount of months off of what you have in your slush fund. So it's a great time to beef up your slush fund. Also, you know, this is kind of personal finance 101, but don't get into the, how will I do this? I've not put any money in a slush fund. You know, I don't even have $400 in my business savings account. So put $10 in today, right? It's just yes. get started and do whatever you can. And make it a habit. Make it a habit. Absolutely. The third thing is, is that no one ever wants to have to let go of team members. No one ever wants to have to do a layoff. But remember that, you know, there's, in my opinion, we live in a time where there's two sides to your business. There was a day and an age and a time where the CEO mentality was the only and sole purpose of the business is for profitability. There's now a profitability side and a social side. You have to decide what your values are in business and what that looks like to you. For me, I like to have a plan. I like to have a, an emergency plan for business of if I needed to downsize my team, what would that look like in terms of who I would still need to keep and what roles could shift to other people? The other side is have a plan where that doesn't have to happen, but know that there may be a need to have a reduction in benefits or a reduction in some perks that you have at the business. And I think most people would absolutely prefer to have a reduction in a perk than they would to not have a role or a position. And so in addition to that, I think you just want to have a plan. You always want to have a strategy of how you keep your business afloat, how you keep it going, how you keep, you know, the, the number one thing that you don't want to do, and this is because of the type of people I'm speaking to. I'm typically speaking to small business owners, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs. Um, maybe you don't have any team members. You maybe have one or two team members. You also constantly want to be thinking about how do you make sure that you're keeping your 
payments coming in. This business is your job, actually, right? Because you've chosen for this to be how you earn your income. And so you want to make sure that you have a plan in place that whatever's going on in the business, you can still retain your salary and your income that you're pulling from the business. Now, here's the fourth thing to do. This flips to personal finance. Make sure that your personal financial house is in order. Make sure that you have a personal emergency fund. Make sure that you are diversified in where your savings are. Make sure that you have, um, remember, investing and things like that. I am not a financial expert. I'm just sharing. One today. Playing one today on TV. That's right. Um, make sure that you remember most investing is for the long term and not for the short term. So don't take on a panic mentality. That's in your business and your personal finances. But I have found that pers- for an entrepreneur, personal finances and business finances, at times, they need to remain very separate, but emotionally it's hard to separate them. And if your personal financial house is in order, if there's hiccups in the business, or if recession causes some slows or delays in your business, then you have your personal financial house in order and one isn't deeply affecting the other. Last point that I want to make here about this is what is the opportunity in a recession? What is the marketing and sales opportunity? I can tell you when I started my business, I started with doing a lot of life and career coaching, a lot of life and career coaching. And so during this recession, there were a lot of layoffs, which gave a lot of people an opportunity to go, do I want to look for another job that may be hard to find or do I want to do something different? And so starting as a life and career coach, Career coaching was a great thing to do. People were getting severances. They were being asked to take early retirement, and they were trying to figure out what their next step is. And then when I shifted into doing business coaching, the same thing. That workforce that began to see in their lifetime that a job did not mean security started thinking, hell, I would just rather do this for myself and start my own business. So what is the opportunity there? Um, Remember, you cannot just be one marketing message for the rest of your life. The successful business owner is constantly taking a marketing message and shifting it for the times, making it relevant, making it about today, making it about what people's current and urgent pains and needs are. So these are some simple things that I think you can think about. And I think the biggest mindset piece I can give you is who cares? So yeah. maybe there's going to be a recession. You're still in business. You own a business. You've got to run that business. You've got to make money. You've got to get clients. You've got to make sales. So keep kissing babies and shaking hands and getting up every day and getting leads and making connections. Because at the end of the day, yes, we need to be educated on what's going on around us in the economy. But at the start of every day, we can remind ourselves that we are our own economy. That's right. Love it. No, I love it. I think those are really practical things of things to do and steps for them to take. And we're, I'm a worrier, so it's really easy for me to sit here and say, don't worry about it. But, you know, I've listened to a lot of podcasts and read a lot of newspapers and I'm just watching and I go, oh, what does this mean? And at the end of the day, you just have, a, have to have healthy business practices, whether it's about the economy or not. And if you follow those steps, it's all going to be good. Absolutely. So as you listen to this podcast today, get out a pen and paper, write down three things you can do. Do you have a personal emergency fund for your finances? Do you have a business slush fund for your finances? Do you have a relationship with a local bank? That's something easy you can do. Do you have a plan for team and support? Should something need to change or should something need to shift? And what are your daily healthy habits around money and business that no matter what is going on in the economy, it doesn't matter because you are still slaying it. You're getting up every day and you're knowing what it is you can do for people, how you do that for people and where those people are because it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. People always need help. They always need solutions. They always need answers. And to end today's podcast, if all else fails during a recession time, open a liquor store liquor sales always spike. (laughs) Good to know. And on that note, that's why it's not so serious. Go have a drink. We'll see you next week. 
Thank you so much for listening to this week's podcast, Serious Business. Please follow us on Instagram at The Driven Inc. And make sure to check us out on Facebook at Driven Inc. as well. Subscribe to this podcast. You don't want to miss a single episode. And tell a friend because good friends share good stuff. See you next week.